Nichols' car has literally been sawed in half. The front end of it has skittered all the way down to the runout area. High winding engines in this modified eliminator category. McGrew red lighting away his chance to the modified eliminator favorite, Buddy Ingersoll. McGrew continues through, but he's done for the day. A tough break as he left the starting line too early, and as Steve pointed out to you, when you get the red light, you lose automatically. Four cars remaining in modified eliminator, Buddy Ingersoll, that's the Pinto with a turbocharged engine. Sam Giannino was to have given a big head start to Ingersoll, but could not wait, red lighting away his chance to move into the finals. So Buddy Ingersoll, having been plagued with breakage with this car for practically an entire year, driving for David Searles, has his work cut out for him as he is pitted against the favorite Buddy Ingersoll from Ziegler, Illinois. And a red light for Paul McCure giving the win automatically to Buddy Ingersoll. An interesting point, Buddy Ingersoll has had a red light against him in every round of competition today. He turned 10.76 seconds, that turbocharged 72 Pinto. Ah, we have a fire coming out of Sabrini's car. Out of the headers, you can see what looks to me like a real problem here. You bet it is, Ken. Uh, there's something definitely wrong with that car. That flame out of the number one cylinder is getting worse, and it looks like it's catching the side of the body on fire. Blowtorch on Al Sabrini's automobile all the way from Utica Road, New York, and it looks like it's all going up in smoke for Sabrini right here at the starting line. That has to be a frustration. And there's the sign. It's all over for Al Sabrini before he ever was able to make the race. But his car running 247 miles an hour, so the parachute not open, and he slammed into the catch net, but right now it's trying to beat Marvin Graham. He did not do it. 5.92 seconds for Marvin, 247 miles an hour. Well, it was a good run and a fine speed for Marvin. Some problems here with severe vibration causing mechanical difficulties. Steve had a chance to catch up with Marvin and his crew in the pit area and find out what was wrong. Dave, hanging from the hoist here at the Frazier in Rice Pits is the car of our low qualifier, Marvin Graham. Marvin told us the car shook very hard, and apparently it did so badly, in fact, that it broke the chassis. They discovered it in their pits, uh, came over here to get some of that famous uh, volunteer help you can always get from the guys that didn't survive first round. But going into uh, round number three, Marvin Graham has got to wonder, is this chassis going to hold up? But for safety, watch the car in the near side lane. Dave Uahara, Santa Clara, California, smacks the wall, one of the worst top fuel crashes I have ever seen. You see the rear end of the car bouncing down the drag strip, it literally explodes, but that's okay. What's important is that the roll cage section where Uahara is strapped in is intact and he is going to be A-OK, -okay, Paul. The safety crew is already on top of the car and Steve, when the parts fly off of the car, that keeps energy from being transferred to the driver. That's right, you might as well just get rid of any excess metal. You don't need it, and especially you don't need those big balloon tires because they can cause the car to bounce violently down the racetrack. Here it hits the wall, the rear end breaks away, and then the car just slides down the concrete wall with a very shaken Dave Uahara saying, what happened? And the stress of over 250 miles an hour is continually placed on the nitro-burning engines used in top fuel racing. Sometimes, as Joe Amato found out in round number one, something lets go. While Amato was pulling to a stop on the racetrack, his competition, Lucille Lee, was waiting patiently at the starting line. With Amato out of racing for the day, all Lucille had to do was go straight. A quick wheel stand. Lucille across the center line of the track and disqualification. The concentration on the starting line, intense by both drivers, and it is Tharp out first as Shirley loses traction, and Tharp explodes the motor. He holds on to win it. The supercharger hanging off the side of the car, and Richard Tharp defeats Shirley Muldowney. Final round appearance at an NHRA championship event. Dave, Connie Kalev is very anxious. He's motioning to the starter, get Jody Smart up here, I'm ready. Jody Smart, who took a long time in the burnout as we explained why he stopped the car so slowly. Coletta is not happy at all. Finally, they are staged and ready. Jody Smart is in. And the motor explodes on Connie Coletta's car. The car going sideways and trailing oil. You can see it just coming out of the engine and the flames underneath the car. Connie, I am sure, realizes that it's rather warm. 
Jody Smart shots it off. He goes on through and takes the win and turns off. But for Connie Coletta, a tremendous engine explosion. The fire still burning. In the 31st running of this event, well, there was a unique car in the first round of Top Fuel Eliminator. You know, the first Indy the U.S. Nationals you qualify for is always a special one, particularly if you do it in a car that's so different, uh, the competition laughed at you. Well, they're not laughing at Dave Miller from Illinois now. In the first round, he was up against Daryl Gwen, the freshman racer from Miami, Florida, at just 23. In fact, uh, it was so painful, Brock, that on the nose of uh, Dave Miller's car, it says, there is no anguish known to the human race like the pain of a new idea. And the idea in this case is a very short little car that he hopes will have better weight transfer. Unfortunately for Dave, qualifying was the only glory he was to enjoy at this year's U.S. Nationals. Daryl Gwynn put him out first round. I talked to Dave when it was over. He's in the lane nearest the camera, and he puts a tremendous hole shot on Marconi. Marconi very late off the starting line, and Gwynn with a brilliant performance as Marconi continues on, and Marconi's parachutes have not opened. The car streaking down the shutdown area, beginning to bounce as Marconi hits the brakes of those huge rear tires acting like rubber balls. It almost turns over, and Marconi puts it into the guardrail and the fence at the end of the racetrack. Dave, over the years, we've talked about violent engine explosions. Well, Gene Snow had one in qualifying here at the Mile High Nationals, more like a strange engine explosion. Look at this. No one has ever seen anything quite like it. That is an intake valve impaled right in the center of a piston. Now, first it looked like it tried to go over there and said, no, nah, no, nah, I don't like it there. I better center myself. The amazing thing is the blower didn't even come off. Everybody has been by to look at this part. No one, as I said, has ever seen anything like it. And Big Daddy Don Garlitz is trying to get it from Gene for a display case in his drag racing museum in Ocala, Florida. Just incredible. Oh, no, he wouldn't change because he's thinking of lane choice in the next round. All right, let's watch Dick LaHaye. Remember, this is a new untried power plant. Not only untried, they had hoped to never unload it out of the trailer here because it was built for sea level competition. Whoa, look at that fire, uh, Steve. Fire come out of that header. Something has backfired on that engine. LaHaye has now pulled to the stop at the end of the burnout. The motor sounds very erratic. Oh. LaHaye may be out of this thing. Yeah, he has heard the pop. I guess he figures it's got a rod out or something. Very professional has pulled over to the side to keep from oil in the drag strip. But there's no oil coming out of it. And the engine is still running. Well, there goes Tom Cattleman, one of the uh, members of the LaHaye crew, starting line. He's backing up. This isn't over yet, Gary. Well, amazingly, he is rolling back into position. And as we take another look, Don Garlitz, what do you think may have happened? Well, it looks like the engine shoots a lot of fuel out, no load on it. The fuel explodes in midair outside of the engine, no damage to the engine, just a lot of concussion in the immediate area of the starting line. Here, maybe we can see how much shorter it is than Dick LaHaye's car. LaHaye's machine is built to that maximum 300 inches. A beautiful start. A tremendous drag race. Oh, impossible to tell. From that angle, who won had to go with the lights, and Amato ends up with a victory in nearly identical times. 5.22 for each man. One of the most even starts I have ever seen in drag racing, but I noticed that Dick LaHaye's front end did a little porpoise in action on the starting line. I imagine that he has taken a lot of weight out of the front of that car because Dick LaHaye is very weight conscious. This gives him more available horsepower to drive the car, but he might pay a price with that front end dangling out there like that. He could jump over the finish line lights because notice how close they are to the ground, and that's just exactly what he does. You can see light under the car. Oh, Steve, you have no idea how difficult that is. I'd take my hat off of that young man to be able to get from a totally different reacting and driving car and then into a fuel dragster. Understand in the alcohol funny car, you have two... Oh, Pat Austin on the burnout has exploded the motor. It looks like he backpedaled it. The engine was a little too high. He stepped back on it. It went lean, and he's out of the race. Lee Beard absolutely destroyed. He had put a brand new supercharger on that engine, as Don said, maybe a little inexperience uh, for Pat Austin, and you can understand why his first weekend in the car. But take it easy and save it for us in the court, but nobody does that anymore. They won't. Oh, and he bangs the supercharger right off of the starting line. It's a good thing he was on a single run. He'll advance to the final four, but that crew will have a lot of work to do. Oh, Donnie's waving his hand. What's going on? Well, the engine is still running. He's actually trying to stop the car. He cannot stop the car. Evidently, the blower lifted off the manifold. The engine is sucking enough air and fuel to run maybe, oh, 80, 90 miles an hour. Who knows? He has got some problems, Steve. He is picking up speed. Even though the parachutes are out, he is going into the sand trap. 
Oh my, a disaster for Corey McLennathan. A harvest of 400 Winston points. His fans are riding with him. And Pendragon smokes the tires. Forrest smokes the tires. Forrest comes close to the wall. Forrest may have hit the wall. And it's Pendragon across the mark. Oh, you want drama. A 776, but who cares the last time? They slugged it out. They beat each other up all the way down the quarter mile. The Larry Minor Motorsports crew has gone crazy. 13 in round one was facing Robert Real in the near lane, and everything was going fine, Don, until the end of the race. It looked like Brotherton just had a nice, easy pass till the engine exploded. We see the parachutes getting burned. The car has run nearly 290 miles an hour. Brotherton cannot get it stopped. He tries desperately to save the car, not go into the net. That was a mistake. He turns the car over on its side. Problem for Gordon Minio. He talked about big time problems. Did he ever? Oh yeah, I've never seen this happen before. Watch the car in the far lane. Oh, boom. You know what happened? He blew both rear tires simultaneously. Occasionally, we'll see one tire blow and do a little body damage, but nothing like what we saw here at Pomona in round one. I talked to a shot driver. What started out as a coupe is now a roadster. <laughs> you got that right. I don't know what happened. I've never seen anything like that in all my life. What do you think happened? I have no idea, my friend. Those, those tires only had five runs on them or four runs. There's nothing wrong with this car. I mean, I don't understand this. Well, 93 has got to be better. Oh, yeah. I'm sure it will. So Gordon Minio, fortunate to come out of that one unscathed. Sun beginning to set here at Pomona. Steve Evans, a great race on tap. Absolutely. I wouldn't wager a sue. Either way, you're running with Kenny Bernstein. We don't see a motto. Bernstein engine goes away. Bernstein sideways in the middle of the racetrack. Kenny Bernstein in big, big trouble. Bernstein is over the rail, on fire. We are going to rush to the scene. Brock Yates, pick it up. In the other semifinal, it was Warren Johnson against Indianapolis native Steve Schmidt. Now watch the O's wheel of Johnson in the far lane. Look how long the front wheels were off the ground, all the way through low and second gear. But it didn't matter. Johnson wins it by a nose. They both run identical 7.15 second to last time. I talked to Warren about that wheel stand. Warren, a broken wheelie bar. This baby could have been a handful. Oh, man, I feel like uh, Bob Riggle in a wheel stander. All I saw was black sky and bats. May shock some folks, but that's where Ramp likes to run. Oh, my goodness, and he goes up in smoke, and Shelley has all kinds of problems, blows the right rear tire. She's trying to control the race car. The parachutes are coming out, and now it'll slow down quickly. But something let go. You saw the sparks come out of the car. The slick 50 dragster, absolutely a mess at this point.